All right. Well, we got a lot of folks in here. Damn, boy, y'all tell this be lying. And then when you get caught in a lie, then y'all start deflecting and then move to another lie. Goodness gracious, man. That's why we want to delineate, man, from these that lying scam mentality, dude. All right, let's get hater in here. <clears throat> hater, hop on, man. What's up, Nikki? I see Nikki the God in here, and I see Miss Snacks. I see Brother Black Alpha. I see Miss Nicety Gal. Hater, hop on, brother. Hater, hop on. All right, hater. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Sound like they having a, a little Arabic cookout over there. Hater, you you good, brother? Hello, guys. How are you, Mr. Hater? I am how fine. You, now, where, where are you calling from? I am calling from Pakistan. Pakistan. Okay, my man. So what's what's happening over there in Pakistan? I was just fucking your sister. Hey! <laughs> yeah, that that didn't hit like you wanted it to hit. Y'all 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 wit is very lacking. Just saying a loud profanity and giggling, that's not that's not witty. Okay, that's why you guys have no culture and you have to flee. Your your wit is horrible. I think it just did a 1980s thing that we used to do when we were kids. Just call somebody and curse and hang up and giggle. Yeah, these niggas are 30 years behind. All right. All right. Lord. Hey, I'm from Pakistan. Fuck you, niggas. Hamdini, hamya. Man, that didn't make no sense. That wasn't witty. It wasn't even creative. <coughs> Excuse me. Y'all bear with me. My, my throat is still a little janky. Oh, goodness. Um, and my man, Mikhail, brought up a very good point. You notice all these tethers from Africa. Notice they call up, they got a lot of heat for foundational Black Americans. None of these folks got heat for Nick Fuentes. Did y'all see what Nick Fuentes, the white supremacist, he said? He start, boy, he went on a white supremacist rant, start talking about African people. Oh, he was going in on African people, talking about Africans got lower IQs and Africans, is a bunch of Africans are breeding and it's going to be Africans all over the place and Africans are going to be invading places and the whole world is going to look like Africa. And oh, he went on a big anti-African rant. And I don't see none of the tethers with smoke for the Nick Fuentes is out there. I don't see that. Yeah. Let's get Narok. Let's get Narok in here. Narok, hop on. Mr. Narok. Man, at least roll your windows up when you're delivering Postmates, brother. All right, let me get some more people in here. All right, let's get um, Akobali. Let's get Akobali in here. Akobali. Don't call up playing Afro beats and all that shit. Akobali, hop on. A Kobali? Can, can you hear me? Yes, sir. What's going on, man? Um, I'm I'm from South Africa. Um, long time caller. Um, Tariq, you're obviously one of the leaders of the FBA movement, and unlike most of other foundational Black Americans, you've traveled a bit of the continent. What What was your takeaway when you traveled throughout Africa? Like, what What took you back, and what made you even Go on that adventure. Were you were you searching for your roots, or was it just a holiday? What 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 did you learn from traveling the country? No, my my roots are yeah, my roots are here. Yeah, my roots are here. 
I never went nowhere searching for no roots. My roots are right here in the United States. And um, I went to Africa visiting. Well, I, I went to Egypt. I've been to Zanzibar, Tanzania, South Africa. Um, they flew me out and had me do a lecture at um, Zimbabwe. So I've been I've been different parts of Africa, just to vibe and just to try to build and try to get something going, try to get some international hookups with the family. And the problem is, what I've taken away is, it's too goddamn tribal over there, and that tribalism thing. It's not practical no more. And nobody has snapped out of that tribal nonsense because you're being um, dominated by small minority groups of people and they're able to do it because the whole continent is off code. That's the problem. And then what happens is the off code people start coming over here with that off code shit. And we're saying, hey, nah, 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 nah. We're delineating from that. So that's the problem. Too much off-code behavior over there. It's cool people over there. You got some riders. You got some good folks over there. I'm not dumping on the people over there. But that tribalism stuff, nah. That that has to be put by the wayside. Right? No, I agree. I agree. Was it not weird seeing a lot of people who look like you? Like, when you're in the Man. West, when you're in the Western world, you see a lot of Caucasians en masse in, main, in most areas. But was it not weird seeing just a lot of people who look like you? And um, no, and here's the th here's the thing because and we got to get off that. People didn't look like me. I, I look like a foundational Black American, and they knew I was a foundational Black American. Let's be very clear. They knew I was a foreigner. Every time I go to Africa, they know that I'm not from there. They know that we have phenotypical differences. We have we all have melanin and all of that stuff, but we phenotypically look different. And everywhere I went, they can tell. You, you're an American nigga. They knew. They knew I wasn't from there, and which is cool. But, you know, my thing is seeing a bunch of folks who are off code, that's not a flex to me. Seeing millions of black folks who are being subjugated by a very small group of white people, <clears throat> that made me scratch my head, especially in South Africa and say, hey, what the hell is going on over here? What part of South Africa are you from, brother? Um, originally the Eastern Cape, but live in Johannesburg. All right. Um, over there in Johannesburg in South Africa, Cape Town and all that, when I see all of you guys living in them damn townships and shanty towns and shipping cargoes, and right across the street, there's condominiums, white people, and East Indians and Asians living good. I'm like, there's something wrong with this picture. And you're 90% of the population. And I'm like, what the hell do y'all have to lose? But be honest, Tariq. Be honest, Tariq. When you went to nice places, you saw a lot of black people in nice places. Be honest. In every hotel, in every, in every upmarket place, you saw a lot of black people. Be honest. Working there, yeah. And experiencing the place. I mean, you see it all over South Africa. There's the the tide has shifted. It's not like it was in apartheid. You don't see um you don't only see white people enjoying the fruits of the land. You see a lot of black people, if you're being honest. And in Egypt as well. Um, in South Africa, not really, brother. You didn't see the black people in the nice hotels. That's not true. They were working there. You didn't see a lot of the black people in the nice hotels. And also, I was looking for either wealthy or middle-class black neighborhoods. Couldn't find one. Literally not one. It's That's sad. That, but you, you That's do what? Know, every, every, night, every neighborhood is about 60% black. Every nice neighborhood is about 60% black. No, it's not, sir. That's not true. I was over there. I literally was deliberately looking for whole communities of black people who weren't living in them damn shanty towns. I couldn't find them, sir. In Johannesburg, what's the wealthy? Because I, I was I was arguing with somebody on here not too long yeah, ago. Yeah. They, it's the what's, same place they mentioned. It's Santon. 
There's quite it's, a few neighborhoods, but the, the main one is is, is Santon, and it's, it's and, uh, yeah. This game was up here talking about Santon. Santon is mostly white and Asian. It's mostly we white. We we not we have a very tiny population of Asian people. It's mainly I'd say sixty percent black, and then forty percent white. The black people live in Alex Township, sir. In Santon. Santon no, has Alex, little... Alex would be 100% black. Uh, right. And, no, I'm saying Alex. But Santon would be about 60... Because the wealth has transferred over the last 30 years. And I don't know when you came. Did you come before apartheid or recently? Yes. Dude, I came way after apartheid. You know, I came, like, about a decade or so ago. But, yes, yeah, Santon... And the Alex Township is a suburb of Santon, basically. So that's where the black people are. The black people in the little decrepit township of Satin. They're in the ghetto of Satin. They're not in the, the upper echelon part of Satin. Let's, let's be real. I'll disagree with you, but yeah, you're entitled. But the same, I could say the same about uh, the states, right? Most of the nice suburbs, there's no black only suburbs or neighborhoods that are really nice. Are they? Yeah, we do have we have black areas that are actually nice. You have Baldwin Hills, which is a very nice, well-to-do black area out here in Los Angeles. Um, um, Prince George County out there on the East Coast. Um, you have a lot of places out there, whole black neighborhoods in Dallas that are very well-to-do, very nice places. Um, places in Georgia, in the outskirts of Atlanta, a lot of black places that's majority black, very nice places. So we have them. We absolutely have. I'm not, I'm not saying that to denigrate our brothers over there. I'm not saying that to denigrate our brothers and sisters at all. But my takeaway was there's too many of y'all over here to be living in these damn shanty towns. You dig? And these white people right across the street, y'all sitting over here cooking bush meat with E. coli in the water, and they're sitting over across the street with fresh water and fresh food. Nah, there's something wrong with this picture. You see? All right. Now I let it be. Thanks. <clears throat> but thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you. Yeah, man. Yeah, when I saw that, yeah, that's uh, it. Couldn't be us, dude. We are the minority over here, and we said, "Hey, we're gonna have to get something." When they try with the Jim Crow and trying to deny, no, no, we, no, 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 we pay taxes. We're gonna have to hold something. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Damn. When it gets late, my cold and shit start calling, kicking in. But yeah, like I said, we, Foundation of Black Americans, even though we're the minority here, we're being denied resources and all that. We said, hey, man, damn that. We pay taxes. We're going to have to hold something. You know, man, I'm not about to be the majority of something. And I'm sitting over here in a, in a shipping container eating some bush meat and some white supremacists across the street eating buffalo wings and clean water? Nah. It's going to be some changes. You dig? And I've said this before, over there in South Africa, them let Mandela sit in jail for 27 years. That was some bullshit. Even Khalid Muhammad said, y'all could have got him out. And nothing stopping y'all from going over there to Bird Island and getting him up out of that little bit ass jail cell. Y'all the majority. Y'all could have got him out of hell. We were over here getting folks out of jail. We got Osada Shakur out of jail. We're the minority. We got that sister up out of there and got her in a safe space in the, one of the most secure prison societies in the world. And niggas got her up out of there. Yeah. You get your political prisoners the hell up out of there. If you can, y'all could have got him up out of there. Yeah. But I digress. Let me get one or two more calls because when it gets late, I got to go take me some damn elderberry or some shit. All right. Let me get some good callers in here. A shout out to South Africa. I'm not denigrating. Shout Look, I've been to South Africa. South Africa shows me so much love. Y'all show me nothing but love. I got a lot of love and respect for my South African brothers. Let's be very clear. Love the brothers and sisters out there. I Much love and respect. But I'm going to keep it 100 I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and act like I saw some some black folks living well over there. I didn't see it. 
That's just the long and short of it. I just didn't see it. And I don't like that for my people over there. Those are my brothers and sisters. And I want to see y'all do good. I don't want to see y'all living in no damn shipping containers and all that. I'm not going to fake the funk with you. Yeah, that ain't the business. All right. Let me get some hands. Who wants to get on? Who's ready? Raise your hand if you're ready to get on. All right, let's get Richard Buchanan. Richard Buchanan. What's up, Mr. Richard? Richard Buchanan, and then we'll get Lexi. Richard and then Lexi. All right, we'll get Lexi. Lexi, hop on, ma'am. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, how are you? Hey, Tariq, how you doing? Um, you know, I've been listening to you for a very long time. Yeah, I'm kind of new to this X thing. Um, but one thing I want to say, like I was born and raised in Los Angeles. My people are from the South. I'm total FBA. Yes, ma'am. But as a medical professional, I'm a nurse. And I'm going to tell you my experience with the Africans from a medical perspective as an FBA woman, okay? Yeah. Um. I have had nothing but fights since COVID with African nurses. And mm. what's funny is they are so jealous because nursing is one thing that women have. We dominate that industry and we have power in. And there are a lot of Black women, FBAs, that have had historic. I come from a family of medical professionals. Um, they come in, they, they've come in with their scam degrees, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I feel, I've been wanting to say this for so long. Let's, let's so get long. it. Let's get it. Okay. This is the thing. You can easily, you know, if I wanted to, if my sister wanted to take my nursing license, okay, and get a job because she favors me, I could just give her my ID, my social security card, and a paper nursing license, and she could go work as me. You understand? Wow. This is what they are doing, okay? They'll have one name, like somebody legitimate, and they will be, it'll be four, five, six of them using the same name, the same license, okay? And what's scary is that the medical, you know, like the nursing homes, the hospital, not so much the hospitals, but mainly the nursing home, skilled nursing, um, long-term care, assisted living, they are hiring these people by the droves and forcing us to train them, right? Now, mm. if you got your, if you trained as a nurse in Nigeria, right? If you trained as one, just listen to me. If you trained as one in Nigeria and you came over here with a solid education in nursing, and you then pass, because we have what we call refreshers um, for foreign nurses. So it really started with the Filipinos. And they're amazing nurses. Don't get that. They're different. But they're taking, <laughs> they're doing the same program um, where they're doing these refresher courses. So they come into the job, um, haven't taken the NCLEX or anything, no state boards yet. Um, and we do, we, we preset them, we train them. But if you trained as a nurse, why do you not know how to do a blood sugar? Why mm. do you not know how to do a blood pressure? And the sad thing, Tyreek, is I'm watching them because the baby boomers are our, our people, right? Yeah. We're supposed yeah. to be taking care of our baby boomers. They're the ones going out now. And we're taking care of them. I'm in my 40s. And I'm telling you. They're replacing us. Bobby Hammond said a long time ago that they were going to replace Black people, FBAs, with Africans and Caribbeans. He said that a long time ago. My mother said it. She's passed on it. My mother said the same thing. And that's exactly what's happening. And it's very scary because they don't care. They may look like us, but they don't. When I have an FBA patient, it's hard enough when we have to put our parents now in nursing homes because the FBAs never did that. Right? right. We always had our people, uncle such and such, your grandfather in a hospital bed in the living room. Right. That's how we used to do it. And unfortunately, I'm going to land my plane here. So unfortunately, now, you know, Gen X 
is having to take care of the baby boomers. And what bothers me is that, you know, you know how black, older black people, they get fussy. They don't like to be told what to do. Now, when mm-hmm. I get an FBA elder like that, I treat them just like my typical crazy auntie, crazy uncle, you know, Eric Mays, you know, he's yeah. the rest in peace. Eric Mays is a perfect example of that kind of energy. The Majora spirit you talk about, mm-hmm. like that, that's why we have that term, mojo. Mojara yep. spirit, that's that mojo. That, mm-hmm. that, that's all that, his energy is really what you see now. These baby, these black people, these older elders, they're not, they weren't ready. Like I'm so happy my parents have both passed before COVID because it's getting ugly. It's getting mm-hmm. very ugly. My mother told me years ago, um, she was a chemist. My mother told me years ago that they were going to basically um, call the the baby boomers at some point in time. And now that's all coming to fruition. They are using these foreign, not just African nurses, um, they're bringing them in from in- East India, um, some of the Eastern Europeans. All I'm saying is that, you know, when I get a fussy FBA elder, I'm the one they send in to deal with it because see, we have the real insurance. They, some of them still have pensions. <clears throat> yeah. You hear what I'm saying? So the the powers that be, they they want the money, but then we get these people that look like us and they are impatient. They don't take care of them and they're damn near killing them. So yeah. I'm just, I'm gonna land my plane and I'm gonna call back a little bit more and share because one thing I do want to share with you, Tyree, I respect you so much. And you have really grown from when I first started watching you years ago. And I'm very proud of how you have evolved. But one thing we have to stop doing, the one thing, the tactic these Africans, when I say the Africans, I don't mean the good Africans. In fact, it's crazy. My family went back to Africa, to Liberia years ago. Okay. My my aunt has a house over in West Africa. It's not that we don't like them. Like you said, we've been caping for them for years, okay? But they come over and they take advantage and they don't love us, they don't care about us, they're just here to scam. And so long long story short, just one thing they like to do is waste time. And when they get on this platform, when you allow these people on your platform, I know you're saying, I want you guys, FBA family, listen to this. We, I deal with it at my job, you know, Mm. it's them wasting time. They waste my time. When I'm trying to teach, you know, I'm trying to show them here, I'm, I end up doing all their work and they go they go home, I have to go home and I'm still there two hours later charting, right? Mm. You see what I mean? So, and anybody, any, especially any black FBA woman in nursing, she will tell you the same thing. And I'm and I'm, I'm gonna land my plane there, but just let's stop giving them so much. We all, we they've been exposed, FBA we know, now let's get tight, Tariq, and let's talk about how we're gonna, you know, come together and fix this because the elders are gone. Big Mom is gone. Okay, mm-hmm. Big Big Daddy, their their Papa is gone. So now we're, you know, I'm I'll be honest, I'm 48. You know, we're about the same age. Mm-hmm. We're take your people like you. You have the platform where we can convene. Let's kick them out. It's now it's time. They don't They don't deserve, we're wasting time. We have no more time to waste. And that's all I want to say. And I love you. And thank you for what you do. And I'll call back again. And my name's, yes, Le- and my name's Lexi. All right. Thank you. That's good stuff. Lexi hit on some real talk, man. Uh, a lot of these folks, they got them scam degrees. So let me tell y'all someone. And I'm, look, my, my foreign folks, I'm not trying to dump on you. But when when these folks call up, yeah, we we got degrees, we got medical degrees. Uh, tell tell the scam degrees. Uh, uh, the tether class, they be scamming their asses off with them damn degrees. They have a whole racket of scams with them damn medical degrees. Don't let them try to play that flex game. Oh, they got a whole complete network of scams with them damn scammy ass medical degrees. And let me tell you something, y'all better wonder, it's no wonder why elder abuse is on the damn rise. Y'all listen to what Lexi is telling you. They let a lot of the tethers, let me tell you, they let them into 
um, their C, uh, um, um, correction officers, their COs, especially out there in Texas. And you see a lot of them engaging in abuse. Um, and they're working in the medical field and there's a lot of abuse going on with that too. There's a lot of abuse going on with that. But Texas is big on getting those Nigerian and some of the West African um, corrections officers to work in the jails. And them dudes are hella abusive. They had some working out in Maryland about two years ago. They had a tether correction officer who got charged with rape, but they didn't say who he was raping. That's the thing that threw me off. Was he raping dudes? Who was he, who was he getting down on? This was in Maryland. It was an African tether. Let me look it up real quick. Hold on one second. Let me, let me give y'all a name real quick. This was a few years ago. Hold on. I'm looking at it real quick. I'm going to give y'all a name. I want y'all to look that up. Um, what's this guy's name? This dude. What's this guy? Da, da, da. Uh, da, 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 what's sex assaulting? What the hell is this guy? Oh, I'm looking it up. But yeah, this dude was who are you raping? I'm trying to remember if it was women or dudes. But I know it was a damn tether. This dude was buck breaking like a mug. Hold on one second. I'm trying to see it. I hate when I can't find stuff on the fly. Uh, da, 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 da. I, ah, I can't find this shit. Hold on. So he's on the, damn, they won't. I'm trying to see who it, they keep saying he was assaulting individuals, but they weren't wouldn't say if it was a man or a woman or whoever. Um, damn. And they're not putting his name. Okay, y'all look it up. Look it up. I don't know because I'll be here trying to find it. But it was in, I think it was out there in Baltimore when this was happening. And um, yeah, man, the, the dominant society, they've been planning this since the 60s, bringing in when we were fighting to get Africans and Caribbeans over as reinforcement. The dominant society said, hey, you know what? Let's get some. Let's get the coon class. Yeah, if they want them over here. Let's screen them before they come over and make sure we get the coons. And we'll have the coons replace them. We get a whole set of docile Negroes. That's what they do whenever there's a rowdy population. They have to try to replace them with a more docile population. See, that's what they were going to do in France. I mean, not France, I'm sorry, in Haiti. And speaking of Haiti, there's some stuff going on in Haiti. There's, it sounds like the U.S., they low-key talk about invading Haiti the way they're talking. But with Haiti, what Napoleon was going to do because of the Haitian Revolution, people were rising up. So what they were going to do, because uh, the little pockets of rebellion was popping off, Napoleon was like, we're just going to kill all the blacks there, just bring in a whole new crop. Because the revolution had popped off and people were turning up. They were like, well, these niggas are no good no more. The spirit of revolution is already in them. So we're going to have to commit a genocide. We had to kill all of them. And we're just going to have to bring a whole new crop of Negroes over here. They're going to be more docile, more submissive. You know, we go to Africa. We can find some docile and submissive Negroes to bring them over. But the ones here, they're, even after, if, if we do beat them, the spirit of revolution is already there. So they're just not going to be any good. So they can turn up on us any time. So we're going to have to just wipe them all out. So, and, and go look at my movie, 1804. We talk about this. Um, they started getting sulfur and locking people in ships and in, in certain areas and burning the sulfur and the sulfur, the gas was killing people. So that was the first time people were using gas for genocide. And the people over in Haiti realized what was happening. They were like, they're trying to kill us all. So they're like, hey, we ain't got a damn thing to lose. So they turned all the way up and started slaughtering them white supremacists, as they should have. And that's how they got them up out of there. The white supremacists was going to try to kill all of them. They're like, well, shit, right, we're going to all die. We might as well go for broke. And that's what they did. Because Napoleon, he broke one of the, the major laws of warfare. 
you you never keep somebody cornered in warfare. You always give somebody an opening. You understand in warfare, the art of war, you never corner somebody. If you corner somebody, they're going to fight to the death. You don't want nobody who's going to fight to the death. You always leave somewhat of an opening. So they'll fight for the opening instead of fighting for death. See, when they start fighting for the opening, you got a chance. They're fighting to escape. So you always leave a little crack at the door for them. But they didn't do that for Haiti. They were like, yeah, we're going to get all of you up out of here. And they're like, well, shit, we're going to get your ass. You see? So that was a warfare blunder that Napoleon made. You dig? That's what we got to study warfare and military science and all that stuff. We got to study it. All right. Let me see. Uh, should I get one more? Because we in here heavy. And the later it gets, I need to be under the blankets, chilling with some Robitussin and some um elderberry all right let me get yeah i get one more y'all raise your hand let me get one more good one in here let me get one more let me get a good one let me get my girl nicety get miss nicety in here miss nicety girl what's up beloved Peace, Tariq. Peace, everybody in the room. Um, Tariq, I was just going to ask if you can pull Sister Eve up. She has something that she wanted to say to you this evening. She wasn't okay. able to get up. Thanks. Okay. Oh, my battery's getting low. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Let me get my battery charged real quick. Hold on. Hold on. Wait one second. Hold on. There we go. All right. Let me get Eve in the building. What's going on, Miss Eve? Peace, Wait, Tariq. Can you hear me? I can hear you. What's going on, Eve? Man, look, I you've been roasting these tethers all night, and I originally put my hand up when you was talking about hairlines, because the barbell in the room has a hairline like I've never seen before, and I just wasn't sure if you were aware of all of what was going on, and um, if you were, I was wondering if you had any advice on how I should proceed. Yeah, you know, I don't I don't know what the deal is with that situation at all. I don't know what's going on with it. Um and I can't speak on that because I that sound like some a very personal thing and I don't know what I don't know the ins and outs of it. But I, I really hope y'all kind of work that out and get it together cuz I don't know what it stems from or anything. So I don't know what that's about. Well, could I ask another question then? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay. Here's another question. When, um, I guess when people have been wronged, right, you would agree that things should handle offline, you know, maybe privately or personally. You were just talking about not putting people in a corner because of how people react to that type of um, action, right? Mm -hmm. So then, you know, when people get put in corners by people who are supposed to be I don't know, I guess, smarter than that because of what they've studied, you know, the art of war and 48 laws of power and stuff like that. I feel like we should pay attention to the people who've been talking about this stuff. And if we are paying attention to it, whether you know that the intimate details of what's going on or not, maybe just asking people to do their research and ask questions because that's how you get to clarity. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there it is. Well, thank you so much, dear. Thank you so much, Eve. All right. All right. Let me get my hush. Let's get hush in here. Hush is giving a thumbs down. Hush, hop in, hush. Let's get Mr. Hush in here. Hush, hop in. What's going on? How you doing, man? What's up, brother? How are you, Hush? I'm good, gang. Um, so... I've realized over the last few days, and I don't know if it's just like the, the universe telling me this, right? But I forgot, and we all forget that white Americans are the OG tethers, right? Yeah. That, that took from the wasp. And, I, and I've been researching like wasp and, you know, white Anglo-Saxons or whatever. And I've realized that they don't like when you point that distinction out. They don't like when you tell them, you know, you're not from here. Like I had a situation with uh, Fuentes, I uh, saw it earlier, and they were telling us to get involved. And I said to myself, 
this is a Mexican going at Africans. Why would I care? You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I had a situation um, the other day where, uh, you know, New York City, you, you've been around. We got stoop culture where you sit on the stoop and do what you do or whatever, right? So right. this lady, she called the cops to me. So I was sitting on her stoop. It was on a live space. So I looked at her and I said, are you fucking German? Not, not for, ne- for no reason. And she got so offended when I called her German. And I didn't understand why. But it made me think like they're so deep into their cosplay that they don't want to give it up for any reason. They like don't even oh, really? point it out. Oh, that's real talk. That's real talk. They they hate uh, being reminded that they fled from Europe. Oh, they hate that. You know, when they call up here, you know, always notice when I get on their European ancestry, they get real squeamish and uncomfortable. They don't like that. No, Europe was a place they fled and they left behind. And they, the the fact that they came from a slum, because that's where they they came from. Europe wasn't popping until um, the slave generated revenue built up Western powers. Let's let's be clear. I want people to understand something about history. Europe wasn't worth a damn. Europe was not popping at all. Uh, until the wealth generated from the slavery in the Western Hemisphere built that thing up. Going back to Haiti, Haiti was France's biggest moneymaker. All right? That was, Haiti was France's bread and butter. You understand? Europe was not popping until the wealth generated from our labor over here built up that wealth. For all of Europe. And when people try to say, well, this this European country wasn't a slave trading country, but they got the secondary gains from it because they were able to um, get some of the benefits and the, the resources from the trade. You understand? Europe was not popping before the slave trade popped off and the wealth generated from our labor. It just wasn't popping like that. And when we built this country up, after slavery ended, they needed to undermine us by flooding the zone with a bunch of European immigrants. Yeah. And then they started opening up Ellis Island and you know, bring us your hungry and your poor and your weak and all of that. After the country was already established and built by Foundation of Black Americans. Richard, you in here, brother? Yo, Richard. Yo, Richard. Yeah, I'm here. What's on your mind, Rich? Oh, um, I wanted to ask you a question about Burkina Faso, Mali, and uh, Nigeria. What you think about them, brothers? You think they're getting on cold? With who? With each other. No. Why you say that? Because it's still tribalistic all over in those areas. So they're not on code with each other. You don't think them brothers trying to get on code, though? I don't know. I, I, I see some of those West African nations, some of them are starting to kick some of the white supremacists out. So, you know, that's going in a good direction. That's going in a good direction. But Nigeria is still very tribalistic. It's still very tribalistic. You know, and again, when I see China and all those people going over there setting up shop, are they on code? Yeah, we got to look at it from every angle. All right, all right. I keep saying one more call, but there's so many people in here. Let me get. I got to get out of here because I'm you're here. I'm getting hoarser and hoarser. I don't want to keep talking because it's getting it gets real chilly in the middle of the night. LA weather is funny. It's warm in the daytime and it's freezing at night. The weather is insane out here. Yeah. Um, let's get Jeed in here. This is a Nigerian guy. His name is Jeed. Or is it Jed? Jeed or Jed? What's up, Jeed? Unmute your microphone, brother. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing, Terry? I'm good, G. What part of the U.S. are you in now? Well, currently I'm in San Diego, California. There you go. Sorry. Are you in the military? Oh, no, no, no. I'm in the health IT field. 
But the you do what? You, you do what? I'm in the health IT field. Oh, I see. Got it. Got it. Okay. What's on your mind, bro? Yeah, the brother that just spoke wasn't talking about Nigeria. He was talking about Niger. It, it's a country right above Nigeria. And okay. you're right, Nigeria is still going through a lot of tribalistic, you know, wars. Yeah. I happen to be Nigerian myself. You know, I was born yeah. in the States, but my mother and my father are full Nigerians. And I definitely see what you're talking about. A lot of people that come here are, you know, very, I'll say, uneducated and ignorant. And that's based on the education that they left Nigeria with. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. it's not really like a, an innate hate that they have for like black Americans is more just based on education. You understand? And I feel like for my generation and what I stand for is really bringing everybody together in every little way I can in my own space. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying, you know, what you stand for and everybody on this platform is wrong at all. Everybody has their fights, but I really feel like in anything we could do, to bring each other together is just so important because we all have one common enemy, you know. That's just all this is about for me, you know. I really respect what you do, like I said, but please let's just try to push more love towards each other, man, because it's just sad for me to see standing for, you know, where I stand, being uh, somebody that was born here, and I understand what, you know, you guys have been through in terms of the struggle. Not that I've been through it directly, but I understand it, I feel it, I see it every day, I've been subjected to it, you know. So, and I also see their ignorance on the other side. So I just, I just want to say, man, for back of, lack of better words, just, man, just try to understand what they're going through is just uneducation and ignorance, not necessarily like in their hate. Right. All right, my man. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're very welcome. But yeah, man, it, it is what it is, bro. Look, I think is we're at a point now where, hey, man, uh, foundational black Americans are going to have to um, really focus on getting the tangibles we need. We're going to have to really um, get extra codified around our culture and our lineage, not to denigrate anybody else, but we have to protect ourselves. We have to protect our physical essence, our financial essence, and we have to protect our spiritual essence because our Bojara spirit is constantly being chipped at. They're always trying to do things to break our spirit. That's what buck breaking was about. They understood we had a certain spirit. So everything was all about terrorizing us and to break, trying to break that Mojara spirit that we have. The sexual violations, the psychological violations, and coming out of all of that abuse, dealing with the demonic spirit of white supremacy. I want people to understand how demonic white supremacy is. The white supremacists love de um, denying white supremacy. They were loud and proud about white supremacy. They were very, white supremacy is their word. White supremacy is the law of the land. And it's an evil, degenerate, satanic ass system. That's why we, as foundational Black Americans, we've been the main progenitors of people chipping away at that demonic ass satanic system. That's why the white supremacists have to try to get everybody against us. Everybody who comes over here, you're not fighting the Nick Fuentes's and the Jared Taylor's and the people who denigrate your culture and your society. Y'all coming over here trying to come at us, the people with the majority spirit, the people who has helped you. We've helped every damn body. You understand? And we possess that Majora spirit. And I want y'all to understand how important your spiritual essence is, family, and how important you are as foundational Black Americans and how important you are to the global scheme of things. Because if we are out of the mix, the planet is done. If foundational Black Americans, if we are neutralized or wiped out, do y'all know it's the it's done for this planet? The Earth as we know it is done because these other groups are not going to fight white supremacy, so they're going to get gobbled up and destroyed, which they've already been destroyed in their homelands. 
they're going to be destroyed. And then when the white supremacists destroy all of the non-white people, they're going to destroy themselves. They're destructive people. The white supremacists, they are a cancerous people. They're like a parasitic people. And parasites, they have to find something to parasite on. And when there's no host to parasite on, they'll just start parasiting on each other and wipe each other out. Remember, fam, let, let me, let's bring it back here. And I, I know I, I said I'm a, you know, I'm a bounce, but we, we're here. We're chopping it up. Family, again, I always talk about when these white supremacists first came out here to North America, and when they tried to start and establish villages and colonies on their own, these bastards were parasiting off each other because we weren't around yet. We were around, but we weren't subjugated under them yet. We were around, but we weren't subjugated under them yet. So in their little villages like Jamestown and, and um, Roanoke, they, they, they cannibalized each other. They, they literally ate each other. Jamestown, right before the arrival of black people to Jamestown, these people engaged in cannibal, cannibalism. They were sitting up there eating each other. They were starving. They went through the starving time. They couldn't survive. We literally saved these people down in um, St. Augustine, down in, in Florida, when they tried to get a colony there. The French went down there. All these different groups went down there. They were cannibalizing each other. They had to go back to France, and they were eating each other on the way back. You know, like 50 niggas was on a ship, and 10 came back. Like, where the other ones? I don't know. <laughs> you ate them, nigga. But the thing is, these people will parasite off of each other if they don't have a host. And we've been the host. They've been parasiting off of us and our lineage and our culture and our spirit. They've been parasiting off of that for the last 500 years. And truth be told, everybody's been parasiting off of our lineage. That's why anytime they want to get something going on for themselves, this goes back to what I was talking about earlier. Mammy Harris, who's another parasitic tether, not of our lineage. They out there on the Edmund Pettus Bridge talking about, yes, we're out here to commemorate Selma and talk about the Gaza Strip and what's happening in the Gaza Strip. Are you parasiting that to our lineage and our struggle? You understand? Because because we have the Majora spirit, we have that Majora energy, we have a moral capital that comes from our Majora spirit that don't nobody else have. That's why people always, again, try to get us to back their movements. Anytime there's a conflict, the first thing is, what are foundational Black Americans siding with? Anytime there's a conflict anywhere, where are the FBAs? If anybody gets in a jam, where are the FBAs? Remember when the people were going through what they were going through up there in the Ukraine? They were getting kicked out the Ukraine and getting stranded in the Ukraine. They're on TV asking for the foundation of Black Americans. They're calling for Beyonce and Oprah and Keith Sweat. Where are these FBA niggas to help us? It always go back to us and we help people. When there's hostages somewhere, who do they go send? They got to send FBAs to go get them. They always got to send us to go save people. And they had to send Jesse Jackson to go get hostages from all over the place. They said Muhammad Ali had to go get some hostages. Y'all know that? I think in the 90s, right? What did it in the 90s? There was some hostages over there. I think Saddam Hussein or somebody had him. And Muhammad Ali went over there and got him. And hell, over there in um, North Korea, there were some hostages over there. Dennis Rodman went and got him. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that Dennis Rodman helped get some hostages released from North Korea? You understand? That Majara spirit is real. People recognize it. And they respect it. That's why they were trying to stop us from going over there to go get that, that Britney chick, the chick who was over there in um, Russia. 
because brothers was about to go over there and get it. They were trying to shame black folks, black men over here. They were trying to shame black men for not speaking out, but black people were speaking out against, you know, what was happening to the sister. And you had black folks, brothers, talking about going over there and they kept getting threatened to not go over there. I think Dennis Rodman was going to go over there to Russia. I think Roy Jones Jr. was going to go over there to Russia. It was a few of us that were going to go over there and get that sister because brothers had connections and ties over there. You had good relationships with the people over there. They didn't want that to happen. See, they don't, they, that whole thing of us being international ambassadors, they don't want that image out there like that. They wanted us to reel that back in. They, they don't want that energy out there like that. You dig? Hey, like, now we can't have these black people going over here, these high profile cases, wheeling and dealing and making these international deals because that's going to that's going to be contagious to the other Negroes to let us know the international clout we have. You understand? But our Mojara spirit is very, very real, family. It's a very powerful thing. And people try to parasite onto it. I want us, the, the FBA family, to understand the, how powerful our spiritual soul and essence is. It's a powerful thing, man. It is very unique and other people don't have it. And we we have to give praises and props to our ancestors. We got to give praises and props to them. That's why I give praises and props to them as much as I can. But anyway, man, I digress. Let me get out of here. Speaking of our ancestors, go get your root work deodorant sprinkled with some ancestral roots and herbs at rootworkstyle.com. Ladies and gentlemen, rootworkstyle.com. And um, go to fbastream.com to see all these movies. If you want to see the movie 1804, Go to fbastream.com. Very good movie. And all my other movies are great. All right. Yeah, so how many people in here? Well, we are in here. A lot of folks in here. But anyway, go get the book, Hidden Heroes from A to Z. That's another good book where you can soak in some of that ancestral spirit. All right, y'all. I'm up out of here. Puppy Akute and Lola Vuve to the family. Peace. From the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice.